Hi, guys. My name is Patricia Somerset, and I'm here with Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz. Everyone, I have the honour and the privilege of the company of Patricia Somerset today. So, hello, Patricia. Hello, Chris. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Again, <laughs> always feels awkward on <laughs> the do this greeting after I've just done it. <laughs> just chatting away, and then, <laughs> then it's all back to back to square one. <laughs> so, you're over in you say Wisconsin at the moment, and you've just been to a con this weekend. Yeah, around. I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm. Um, I just finished with uh, Wizard World Madison. So, mm -hmm. funny enough, uh, because my family's from Upper Michigan. We were able to. Um, they, they drove up to visit, so I'm I'm staying in Wisconsin for an extra day and journeying around Madison. It's brilliant, and then I'll be heading to LA afterwards. Oh, that's fantastic! That's family time. <laughs> mm. Excellent. I mean, I guess it's quite rare as well. Sometimes you know when you can actually be close to your family in, your, in the role in the job that you're in. It is, yeah, and especially like um, in the UP where I'm from, where my parents still still live. It, it's really remote, and it's quite hard to get to by plane. Mm -hmm. It's like these really expensive tickets to get there, and it's like always a, an, an indirect flight. And so I'm always like, oh, anytime I get to see him is great. But <laughs> we always joke like we might as well go to Paris or, or go to somewhere in Europe for like the yeah. same price as going to Upper Michigan for like a week. It's like, yeah, so yeah. that's like, a journey. Okay. Yeah, that's good. that is really good. It's like that here in the UK. We were actually looking to go on holiday just in a static caravan. I think it was in Scotland, and I think it would have cost us cheaper to go to Florida for two weeks than it would yeah. have done to like our centre parks in Scotland. It's like Scotland's like a five hour drive away. How can it be <laughs> cheaper to go nine hour flight? <laughs> you know. Mm. Different country, yeah. Well, yeah, different country. Yeah. Either, but yeah, one yeah. one next door, one yeah, one yeah, <laughs> one's next door, and one's across. Yeah, we got a, yeah. Oh, from Wales, two countries to get through to. <laughs> I was in I was in Wales. Oh gosh, so many years ago when I when I actually trained in the UK at the same school that Victoria Atkin mm -hmm. trained at. We both did masters at the same time. Uh, she did musical theatre. I did classical acting, and we'd cross in the halls and not know who each other was at this point. Um, but uh, I went to Wales, Snowdonia. We hiked Snowdonia Mountain, my classmates oh, and I. So that's my experience of Wales. That's literally and... about. Oh, it was what did you say? That's 45 well, minutes from me, Snowdon. Is it really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, <laughs> so now you know kind of the location. <laughs> yeah, if I want to go for a hike. You know, my hiking buddy's going to be. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a cracking place up there. It's beautiful, beautiful scenery, too. <laughs> sorry I can't speak that's my old slide. sorry if I might see a cracking I like that word at the moment sorry. I love that word I love it <laughs> excellent <laughs> so you, I mean with a classical background then as well how did you find yourself moving into voice acting and things I mean obviously the classical the yeah. hack, it's, it's, it, uh, to me it's, uh, obviously it's it's a completely different form in a way to um, to the classical way you've been brought up with. Yeah, I guess it is and it isn't. Um, I've always done voice acting at the same time as I've done theater. Mm -hmm. So I started to train them both in theater school and pursued them simultaneously. There's a lot of crossover. And actually, I think more and more now that video games are becoming more artful and they're, they're consider, considered to be higher forms of art at this point, you have a lot of like film writers, you have theater writers. I know even like the National Theater School in Canada, which uh, previously had done mostly theater, they even stayed away from film scripts. They now have a video game writing class. Okay. So it's kind of interesting to see how that's all melding these days. Yeah. But I, I find like all classic storytelling comes from studying the classics and the video game tropes are all coming from classic storytelling, really, like these big epic stories that were either Greek or, or something else and come from the, you know, the original seven or mm -hmm. 16 stories or whatever you'd like to say. So um, anyway, any sort of training like that is useful, I guess, when analyzing those kinds of scripts. Oh, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, you look at even just take the Assassin's Creed games, for example. And, and how right. The, <laughs> it's a perfect <laughs> example, really, I suppose, isn't it? You know, Odyssey takes from obviously the... Um, the, all the Egyptian, the classics from the Egyptian and uh, the eras, and well, I'm not going to go into every one because there's so many. Just because, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. and, and cite each individual thing. But yeah, you're right. I also think as well, possibly the classics. It's 
the, the articulation as well, because especially with voice acting, you, you know, the, there's a different way to, in a way, to articulate. It's more the, very much theatrical articulation of putting your characters across. Because as I say, with the, you know, you're not actually visibly being shown on screen, so it's a lot more emotive in the voice as well. I guess so. Although it's so funny because I, um, I'm actually working on a motion capture project right now. That mm-hmm. I can't say what it is, but um, it's really it's getting to be so filmic. Like it's just, it's mm. getting s- so much more filmic, but there is still that element of that, that really interesting technical thing where of course you might be playing a monster. You might be playing something else, something CGI. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you do have that little room to like be able to manipulate your voice in a way that you would not be able to so much on film. So it's like a fine line, but it is <laughs> still technically different. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Well, yeah. Cause Zelda is more of a cartoon character, but then you look, you do, you look at some of the games like I mean, Far Cry and Assassin's Creed. They are very, mm. the characters on there. It's just, you know, it's like watching a film to be fair. <laughs> the, you yeah. know, the graphics yeah. are, I mean, I'm 40, I'm 43 on Wednesday. Wow. Oh, I'm old. oh happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. Happy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just keep forgetting that it's only so soon. So yeah, I, I grew up on Paperboy. You know, this tiny little blob of a character just <laughs> throwing. <it. laughs> you saw the little yeah. screen bits and that kind of, and to see how far stuff as technology's come on and games have come on, it's, it's, it's fantastic, and they're so yeah. immersive. And they they do, and I think that's the popularity of actors like yourself and Victoria and etc. Et is because people game now like we used to watch films in a way. You know, there's they're, yeah. they're, they're full on stories from start to end. They're so immersive. Uh, and people not gaming, and I see people who not gaming. That's like don't knock it. <laughs> Get in, but you know it's a comp. Of course, people do that instead yeah. of you know reading books, or they, it's the same sort of immersive feel, I think. And it's just yeah, I, I hear a lot of generalizations about gaming um, for people who don't play any. But I always try to remind people of statistics, like you know, fifty percent of gamers are female. Mm-hmm. Um, there are so many different kinds of games aside from the ones that are up for the game awards. Like there's just any. I mean, just it's so vast. <laughs> it's really easy to say like gamer non-gamer there's there's almost no such thing like everybody games not everybody but most people seem to actually game more than people would would realize anyway. yeah, yeah people that yeah <laughs> it's just so broad so, it is i mean i had an interview for play i worked for sony playstation um oh, cool. so this is not associated to sony at all in any way whatsoever i'll just put that in. <laughs> so i worked for them last year for like six disclaimer months. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i worked on their release by helping work out in liverpool in the studios there and they were saying the same thing. I think uh, um, the job that I'd gone for, there was a lady who'd gone for it, and they and they were joking because they said they'd asked her, "Are you a gamer?" And so she was like, "No, not really." And they go, "But you play games on your phone?" She goes, "Yeah, yeah, I play lots of games on my phone." So, so you're a gamer then, <laughs> so, you know? Yeah. Not, because, like you've just said, there are so many different versions. So many. Look, I say not just what's on the awards, but you look on your phone. You've got can you know Candy Crush is a famous one, and things like that, and. Um, Coin Master, which I'm addicted to at the moment, thanks to my son. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, they are. They're still gaming. It might not be, you know, Assassin's Creed right. or Call of Duty, but there's, there's, there's a, people don't realise that they are actually gamers and they are gaming when they, when, you know, when they're knocking other people. So you know, don't knock it because it's it's a fantastic outlet and it's a fantastic genre to be in at the moment. So there's a complete geek here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, oh. no, you're looking at me as I'd say, yeah, you really are one. <laughs> no, 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 I'm gosh. kidding, I'm kidding, I'm hey, joking. Hey, listen, I just did a Comic-Con, okay? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. these are my people. <laughs> They're all my people. <laughs> it is, I mean, and Comic-Con's a lovely way. I think they are fantastic. They've grown so much recently as well. And mm. uh, and just, you know, I mean, I don't know how big the one out there is. Wizard World's a pretty big uh, convention from what I understand. Yeah, yeah, they, they bring out some really cool cool guests. Like, I, I was just uh, talking with Matthew Lewis, like Neville Longbottom, you know, mm-hmm. hanging out in the back. And I know, to, to run into random people like that and just, like, be able to chat with them is, is really it's the best. <laughs> it's so much fun. Oh, um, yeah. I can imagine. I can, actually, I've got to say, I've got to say, I've put it on. I was actually blown away because on Friday night, I'd arranged to meet Michael Bean, you know, Hicks, oh. um, in his hotel. I, I met him two years ago in the hotel. I'll be kept oh. in touch. And to interview him, so I thought I'd interview him. On, um, it's on my way home from work, so we stopped off. At, I stopped at his hotel, you know, just as you do, um, <laughs> and I, I, we interviewed each, uh, interviewed him. And for about twenty minutes, we got completely interrupted by the Backstreet Boys, who were going to Wales Comic Con too. So yeah, <laughs> I was just sat there with a grin on my face because obviously I think it was their agent knew Michael and his wife. So they they were all greeting each other, and I think it was AJ and Howie from the Backstreet Boys 
who had been stood out the back trying to make me laugh when I was interviewing. They'd seen I was trying to be serious, interviewing Michael, and they were there going, mm. and so, you know. It's like, oh, that's so <laughs> adorable yeah. and wonderful. Oh, my gosh. And then, yeah. It must have been in your element. <laughs> I was, yeah. So I've got a lovely picture of me with Michael, AJ, Howie, and, and it was just like, you know, um, fun, yeah, it was like just to be able to hang out with people in these comic cons. Yeah. Obviously, as a guest, it's better because you, you get to hang out with all the your fellow actors and actresses. and. <laughs> But as a comic con goer, we get to hang out with the main cosplayers. Everything it's just fun. it's just a lovely environment and a lovely atmosphere to be there. It is, and everybody's uh, it tends to be like really nice and polite. Mm-hmm. I was thinking this weekend. I was like, there's nothing like being um, escorted out of a car by like Hercules and Superman. Like here, <laughs> man, you know, you know, do you need some help getting? I'm like, yeah, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, I need some help right now. I'm gonna make sure that I need some help right now. <laughs> Anyway. Exactly, and yeah, and it was, you know, it's like you know, your size, color, gender, none of that matters at a comic con, and I think that yeah, yeah, a lot of people need to need to go. A lot more people need to go and see because what, everyone's just out there. There's no malice. It's everyone just goes with one thing in mind, and it's just to have fun, and it's yeah, amazing. it is amazing. There's some fantastic two Predator costumes in Wales Comic Con at the weekend, and they were oh mm. my god, awesome. <laughs> mm. So fantastic. Cool. So um, I know I'm keeping you carry. I'm, see, I told you I ramble. <laughs> uh, this used to, I used to call this show Ramblings of a Hellblazer. So obviously yeah. because I just, <laughs> people said it's like all friends catching up in a pub because it started out, funnily enough, we were talking about Matt. You met Matt Ryan this weekend. Um, and it was, it was talking to, it was because of Constantine that I started this show. And uh, ended up, oh, cool. yeah, I ended up chatting to, well, Matt Gate, I was talking to John Joe O'Neill. And Matt Gate crashed the interview because they were roommates, and I never at the time it was my I think John Joe was my third ever interview, and I never expected to get hold of Matt Ryan because obviously I thought you know really up there star no chance, and then John Joe's talking Matt comes in he's hey Chris how you doing mate and I'm like oh! <laughs> 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 nothing prepared no questions prepared so it's completely ad lib and they were crying with laughter and I was like yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if I make myself look stupid to make people laugh. It's <laughs> no comment. I was going to buy. Yeah, there's no such thing on these things. <laughs> see. I thought I had a poor connection there for a second, but I, I think it's good. Okay. All right, now it's coming through. Um, yeah. So, ah, uh, yeah. I mean, you're coming up to the game awards this Wednesday. No, Thursday. Thursday. Thursday six, yeah. yeah. Thursday, five p.m. Uh, Pacific time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I was looking at the website. I mean, oh my, there's some fantastic. There are some fantastic things. Up, Game of the Year, Assassin's mm. Creed Odyssey. <laughs> yes, I yeah, I'm partial to that one winning, but we'll see. We'll yeah, see. yeah. Uh, I mean, there. I mean, I've, I've, there's games here. I'm going to completely admit. I've, I looked down the list and I was like, I'm so embarrassed because I've not played that. I've not played that one yet. I've not played that one yet. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> you got some work to do, Chris. I have. Yeah. I mean, I've got. I'm hoping. To, I want to get Spider Man that. And God's of War for Christmas, and um, for my son, obviously yeah. for my son. Okay. For you. Yeah, they're for my son. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll take over them, but they're, they're originally for him. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so you don't have any predictions yet on like what you think. Uh, who you I don't know. Actually, I'm, I'm thinking. I'd say Assassin's Creed might. Odyssey. The, I mean, we've got that one. I played that one, obviously. Um, and I, I will be biased, not because it's been sycophantic since so I'm chatting to, to you and Victoria <laughs> from, but I actually love that kind of gameplay and the open world and the historical mm. aspect to it as well. That's what grips me about Assassin's Creed games. It's that lovely historical side of things uh, with Jacob and Evie Fry and Victorian Dickensian kind of, you know, or not, it's not that old. It's uh, Victorian. <laughs> I'm British and I can't even get my third here. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's that very much Victorian type era and the, the like the steampunk. And, oh, it's oh, my man's and, and then Odyssey back in, I've always had a fascination for Egypt. So... Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, then Odyssey itself going to Greek times, and, and, yes. and, and, and yeah, it's just oh, immense. I can't, I can't speak about it. So that's how bad I <laughs> I'm <trying to> <laughs> articulate. <laughs> I do, I'm partial to that one, and I'm kind of partial to um, uh, oh gosh, what's her uh, what's say, Mel, um, Melissa. Melon Santham. Uh, sorry, what's her name? Uh, the, yeah, I'm just going to look because she's up for one of the awards. She is up for best. 
best I'm voice actor, find her. right? Yeah. Um, and she's the only girl on the series. And of course, she's mm-hmm. an assassin. So there's a part of me that's like, mm, <laughs> want that one to be the one. Like, yeah, I really, I don't know her. I actually have never met her. So I'll probably be meeting her at the Game Awards. I'm quite assuming that she's going to be there. So. Oh, brilliant. If you her put... and Elias Tufexis and Michelle Bobak, they'll all be there. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. If you could put a good word in for me, because she did say she'd message me about coming on my show. Oh, Melissa cool. yeah. as well, and she, but she, she never got back to me, so I'm guessing she's busy. Or she saw my show and was like, no! <laughs> <laughs> after, maybe after the words. Yeah, yeah. I'll let her know when she can, yeah. Cool. <laughs> she's, she's up best for performance, and there's a fair few mm-hmm. actors, some good, good names up there. It's freaking fair. amazing, yeah, it she's is. up against them. I mean, any of them would be such an amazing oh, yeah. course, I mean, like... Yeah, Christopher Judge, his voice is one of those. I mean, I was a teal, yeah. you know, he's a teal, yeah. forever teal for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, also, um, yeah, Yuri Lowenthal, like, playing Spider-Man, like, yeah. just an amazing role for him, all in all. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard it's awesome. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've played a little bit of it, and it is absolutely fantastic. You've got Roger Clark up there as well, and Brian Decker. Mm. So there's some, there's some mm. fantastic talent, but obviously I'll be biased as well to Melisanthe as well. Due to the fact it's Assassin's Creed and that's what we want. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Assassin's Creed. Then. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, but, I mean, I'm just look. I'm scrolling down the list here as we go because I'm not. I'm not going to go into everything. Don't worry. We'll be here. We will be here for seven hours. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I was thinking like the other. The other thing is like best ongoing game, and yeah, I was. I was saying the other. Day, I. I mean, obviously, I'm partial to Rainbow Six Siege. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that, <laughs> on that note, mm-hmm. I would love to see Rainbow Six Siege actually pick up an award just the way that they've been so solid and they've continued to grow. But it's hard to tell. I mean, Fortnite is nominated for a lot of stuff and they <laughs> they kind of have the market a lot of the time right now. So yeah. we'll see. That's all I, I hear in my house is Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite. Can I get some of this for Fortnite? Can I buy this for Fortnite? It's like, no. But to be fair, <laughs> it's, it's a really addictive game. <laughs> the other one that's up for a lot of awards is uh, Monster Hunter, right? Um, mm. I think... I've heard only positive things about that game in general, so it's curious. I'm curious that like it's up for a few. I wonder if it'll bring something home anyway. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's up for quite. I can't can't go into each one, but I mean, there's one there. Game of the Year is one of them. It's up for, and I mean, the, yeah, the fact that it's up for that one, and maybe narrative and um, something else. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, it's it's just got powerful, really, really descriptive, powerful graphics in there too as well. Like, mm. They just just like the same people it's just so real it's just unbelievable <laughs> you know you can immerse yourself in it all and it's just technology cgi it's so come so far yeah excuse me sorry <laughs> frog in my throat no, no <laughs> I, I thought you were just getting all choked up about monster hunter yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> game over. I'm, so I'm so emotional <laughs> yeah. so yeah i mean you know as i say there, there are some, some fantastic things we'll keep we'll be keeping our um i'll be keeping my eyes out for this obviously and uh Hopefully, because you'll be having a great time, you and Victoria and everybody else who are going. Woo! Know, yeah, yeah, Victoria and I are attending together, and we're just going to, uh, it's going to be ridiculous. We're going to have such a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I can we have you... a sister man, her and I, so. <laughs> <laughs> you guys together are just hilarious, and I think that's something else that people love is, like, when, you know, you are so genuinely down-to-earth people. You engage with everybody. But I've seen, not yourself, obviously, I've never met you, hopefully one day, um, we'll get to meet, but like Victor, no doubt. <laughs> Victoria and Paul, for example, those two together, whenever I see them at Comic-Cons, they, they deface each other's pictures, they're laughing, they're jo- obviously not nasty, they're laughing, they're joking, and it's just you, such a close-knit, um, like a brethren of you know of, of, of the gaming world that you guys are. If I say brethren, it's, 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 it's you know what I mean. That's like very very yeah. close and family. Yeah, yeah. Family would have been a lot better word. Uh, so to... Brother and sister and yeah, whatever you want to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Just kidding>. so, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, trying to be posh with my words here for you. <laughs> Oh, I got it all. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm just stewing out words that don't exist. That's fine. <laughs> so yeah, no, no. It's um, so yeah, you know, there is such a, a fantastic uh, rapport with you all as well, and 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 the way you act and the way you talk to fans. I mean, I take it you think fans are important for what you do. Oh, of course, yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'm going to Comic Cons and meeting fans is one of my great joys. It's it's changed it's changed my life because before that, I never. I never had that much access to having that many real conversations with people whom I'd never met before. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly you're, you're engaged fully in like other people's stories, but just the sheer amount of it. And, and the fact that you're generally traveling and you're on some sort of adventure when it's happening, mm-hmm. it's a really different way to go through the world. And it's, um, 
I don't know, like it, it's really enhanced my, my, my experience. <laughs> I, I'm very appreciative of it. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, Wisconsin was no exception. Like it doesn't matter where you are. There are a lot of parallels all over the world at different cons. Like there are always gamers or um, geeks, gamers, fun, loving people, families, people that just want to like come up and say hi, kind of all in the same vein. Mm-hmm. And then they're like those little like interesting, like people like interact a little bit differently in different places. Like Salt Lake City is different from Florida is different from Kuwait, let's say. But <laughs> yeah. in general, like it, there's more similar than difference, which is fascinating. Yeah. And again, like that, it brings it back to bringing everyone together. It's like people of all different backgrounds, everything just all come together for one purpose and it's and make so many friends from these things yeah it yeah. is <laughs> they're great <laughs> <laughs> i've actually got a load of questions which i want to get onto because i've been sent in because obviously you are very popular and, and very loved out there oh and thank you thank you very much <laughs> yeah it takes all the adoration you issue <laughs> um jody vestrata or vestrata apologize if i get that surname wrong from the assassin's creed uk facebook page asks what do you find the most intriguing fact or thing in general about the whole of the Assassin's Creed background from the war between the Assassins and the Templars through to the concept of the first civilization, etc.? Oh my God, that's a huge question. <laughs> I'd almost have to like, I'd have to sit down and, I never have ready-made answers for these. I always have to sit down and think about them. I mean, I'm just, I'm fascinated by the way that it keeps reinventing itself. Mm -hmm. Like just, just that alone, it's taken all parts of history, brought it in, brought it into paralleling it with modern day. Um, and then the fact that that can even just shift from time period to time period. I find all of that very fascinating. Um, as far as the lore itself and as far as the history, like the details of the actual stories. Hmm. I have to think about that one. I don't know how to quite answer that one, actually. I want to get back to that one, actually. Okay. I want to get back and look that up and think about it for a while I, I can't i can't answer questions like i can't like <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean yeah to be um, fair I, I got these questions just literally about half an hour before because kim had been out and gathered them so i would have sent them otherwise because oh, i was looking at them thinking you're gonna this is gonna be some fun because you're gonna have to think on this one <laughs> on all some of these yeah. <laughs> <laughs> excellent so kim kim herself we're gonna move as we oh, talk, okay i'm gonna plug no, my phone no, no problem i'm gonna quick scene change yeah kim has asked, what is it like being part of a big franchise such as the Assassin's Creed and Zelda? Both of them feel very, very different. Um, and it always feels like a big privilege, like you're, you're part of something greater than yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think what's really crazy about those, about those two franchises is the, the fan bases in both of them are, are both like they're consistent, loyal. They've been around for a long time. And that gives it a totally different feel. I think you also get, they're both like family friendly yeah. groups, uh, which I, which I love. Mm -hmm. And um, you have a, an age range that's really broad too, with those two particular franchises. Yeah. So all of those are really positive for me. Like <laughs> <laughs> it means that you can talk to any demographic and have something in common with them if you play the game mm -hmm. and they find things in common with each other through them. I don't know. I mean, it's just such a privilege to be part of these these big franchises. I always marvel at how it happened in the first place. Yeah. I'm like, how did I get so lucky to be able to do this? I really don't. It's not like I don't work hard, but you know, it doesn't it doesn't happen for everybody in that way. It, you know, they have other wonderful um, successes, but I don't know. Video games have been very good to me. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, and thank you to the Assassin's Creed group for <laughs> um, embracing me as well. Like I'm so happy to be part of that community yeah they're a fantastic community um, and you know like exactly like i said the comic con there they're just brilliant um uh, brilliant people um kim's also asking what's your favorite motion capture moment while on set oh <laughs> you know i had one recently mm -hmm. um without saying what it is and without saying who i was acting with right how could i say this Basically, I was on set with two people who I admire, and I was just like, oh, this is amazing, and I get to do scenes with these people. I was just, mm -hmm. like, totally tickled to be doing this. Yeah. One of them was, like, a sports person who was really famous, um, and the other one was an actor who is just, like, he's really extraordinary. And at one point, we started to talk about Russia and then realized we'd all trained in Russia, mm -hmm. and we suddenly 
had this weird commonality and we were all like sitting there talking about our random experiences in Russia, which were, <laughs> I don't know. I, it was a, it was, it was just a really happy moment for me. And then I got to perform for one of them. Our band performed for one of them in a little dive bar that week. Oh, uh, nice. Like the, like the Ubisoft group came and like actually sat down and they all showed up and listened to a live performance of our band. And I was like, I am the luckiest person alive right now. This is so cool. I don't know. What <laughs> so that like is all strung off that motion capture experience. Yeah. Enough, but I love motion capture in general. I love, I love T posing. I love like warming up and doing the, the little silly movements and jumping around like a fool, <laughs> mm-hmm. eating fake objects, you know, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, that, that recent one was really special. Yeah. Just um, us just like jazzing on set and being like, oh my God, we all at different times in our life have been to the same place, to the Moscow Art Theater School mm-hmm. in Moscow. Like, we're like, how does that happen? Like, that's not exactly <laughs> the most common thing to happen. In no, no, something. definitely not. Not, not out there. Yeah, it's quite, <laughs> it is, uh, I think it's six degrees of separation, isn't it? So, like, yeah. yeah. It's quite freaky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do not two in your yeah. <laughs> They're right there. So. Um, ben Handy's asking, who's your favourite assassin or Templar and why? Mm. Is it a cop out if I say Evie Fry? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, right. No, no. It's, it would have been even more so if she'd been sat with you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, I'm such a, I'm such a cheater. Oh, gosh. Oh, you can say Evie if she is Evie and then you can. I could say Evie. I, I mean, I like the characters that I play too. I like Galena. I like that she's a modern day assassin mm-hmm. and that her story isn't fully realized and that she's in the comics. And I'd be really curious to see what, what comes up with, with her next. Um, ooh, favorite assassins. I feel like maybe, I was going to say Adewale, but I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I just think he's really badass. Yeah. Um, as a character, as mm-hmm. a character. Yeah. Uh, Agree yeah, on I'm going to leave that one there. Fair enough. Yep. <laughs> I've got to say, I've got to say, mine's yeah, Edward Kenway. I, I just love that that character. <laughs> yeah, it's just great. It's probably the one I've spent most time playing, to be fair. Um, but then it's it's the mm. throw up between Jacob and Evie because the humour between those is just is great on on, on the on the, they're on the very game. Funny, yeah. They are and the game they're, 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 they're very funny characters. So it's just and I love Victorian era. It's just a dark, dismal London. It's it's fantastic. I actually went around London. The way you like to see London. It is, yeah. (laughs) It is, yeah. (laughs) I actually just finished working there for a year down in the Home Office um, as contracting. So I used to I was used to go around Central London as a tour because I used originally from near there, but I went back. I found a what was it Crossbones Graveyard, which is where I think fifteen thousand poor people, prostitutes are all buried, unconsecrated ground. So there's a big campaign to try and save it because they were just dumped and buried there, mass on mass. And obviously, you know, all these people died there, but it's just a little tiny building plot, which it looks like that's cornered off with the memorials and everything in it, right in the central of London. And it's like, wow, where'd you find this? You know, <laughs> you turn around the corner and there's a big bishop. So you're frozen on me. You there? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. you froze <laughs> as well. It's like we're doing the whole like robot dance. I know, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you know, you, you go there and then around the corner, you've got the old. Uh, uh, an abbey, which is just like one wall left, surrounded by modern buildings. So the, the the dismal, dark Victorian and medieval London is still right there. And it's, it's fascinating. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I should go visit that next time. I had not even thought of it. But yeah, yeah. I'll send. I can send you links where those places are as well. They're not dodgy. That'd be cool. They're right yeah, near, near um, Borough Market. They're quite close to. My sister's actually heading there for Christmas, so maybe she'll have time to stop by and oh, right, yeah. take a picture or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be cool. <laughs> Excellent. George Landy. Oh, this is a nice one, because it's, uh, it'll step in. It does me as well, because I'm getting into this. Any advice for people who oh. want to start... Sorry, I'll start that again. <laughs> Any advice for people that want to get started into voice acting? Hmm. <sighs> that one is... That's such a big question. I always... I come from a different place answering that question, depending on what people are coming in with. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's like, if you have experience, I would answer that question differently. If like, you've never tried it before. I always suggest getting training. Always, always, always having some sort of mentor figure when you're doing it is really good. Like even just a coach. Um, A lot of times people think that it's just silly voices and having a vocal range. Mm -hmm. That's not the majority of the work. The majority of the work is being able to take direction well to be able to analyze a script well and to be a good actor through your voice. So I always, I mean, one of the things that I, that I do iterate to people 
is that take the voice off of it and just look at the second part of voice acting. It's, it is acting first and foremost. If you have acting training, um, voice acting is going to be potentially easier for you um, or you're, you're, you're going to approach it with a certain way that uh, producers and directors and fellow castmates will appreciate. It just means you have more to, more to offer. So acting training and mic technique. Um, and that, that just takes like lots of time, time training and be patient because it takes some years. And in, eventually, if you keep doing it, you will be a voice actor. That's um, people like are always like, well, how do you become a voice actor? You just do it. You like do it, and then you do it, and do it, and do it, mm-hmm. and at some point, you're like, I am a voice actor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How'd you get to? Is it was it Carnaby? Not Carnaby Hall, is it? Where's the um, uh, Carnegie Hall? Yeah. How'd you get to Carnegie yes, Hall? Car- practice. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then at one point you go up the stairs, you open the door, and you walk through. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one of the, no, that's right. It, it's, it's, you're right. It's practice. I mean, and especially with voice acting as well, like you say, the acting side. Because when you're acting on screen or on stage, you've got you, you have you've got your body to help put those emotions and put everything out. But when you're voice acting, you it is you like you said, it's literally your voice is reading that character. You are acting that character in your voice only, and you've got to get all that which other people can, you know, use their hand. Like, I'm waving my hands around like some, I don't know what yeah. I'm doing at the moment. But, <laughs> but you just, yeah, it's all focused and concentrated. Yeah, and I mean, like, it is it is channeled. It's all channeled through different things. But ultimately, you still have to be thinking, you know, what does my character want? What are they up to right now? Mm-hmm. How are they responding to the other person? And that's all just, like, acting chops. That's uh, Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. That's a great one. Okay. Louise, <laughs> Louise Baker is, do you get much time to play games you're in at all? I've played some and people are like, <laughs> how much of Breath of the Wild have you played? And I'm like, dude, <laughs> and, uh, about 25 hours. Um, and after that, I was like, I, I'm recording an album and I audition constantly. And it's just, uh, I'm not a huge gamer. Um, I try, and I have lots of fun when I do get a chance. I think the last mm-hmm. thing I played was, like, um, Mario Kart, you know, because okay. like, I'll get it together and play Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. I'll probably play Smash Brothers with some friends when I get back to Montreal. Mm-hmm. We have, like, a little Smash Brothers day planned. That should be fun. Um, but in general, oh, and I might, I might actually buy the new Spearhead game that's going to be available. It came out this year, and it's going to be – actually, the same day as the Game Awards. It's going to be oh, okay. available on the 6th for pre-order, and it's going to be – downloadable on the 13th of December cool. and that's called Omen Sight and I, I have done a couple of voices in that and I love that company I love their indie vibe they're really like solid solid storytelling mm-hmm. they also did stories path of destinies and so I, I'll probably be playing that one at some point soon Thanks. so yeah I guess I do do some stuff but you know yeah eh, it's a negotiation some people like decompress with that stuff and me I'm just like oh my god I have a certain amount of creative energy in the day mm-hmm. and only a certain amount of hours Oh, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. it's, hard <laughs> it's a hard life. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh dear. No, but it's, it's cool because if you're working so much, that means people get to you know see the characters more themselves. So <laughs> that's the thing. Like people, um, people can be sort of judgmental about that. But I, like, honestly, look like if if I didn't go about my career the way I did and with the veracity that I, that I go about things, mm-hmm. if I did play more games. I probably wouldn't be the voice of Zelda and I probably wouldn't be an assassin Mm -hmm. if I hadn't instead been a competitive athlete and then been like reading and training for theater on the side, things like that. You know, it's like some people are gamers and it's great and they turn into be voice actors, but that's not, that hasn't been my path. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. That's how we have That's how things, that's how the cookie crumbles. (laughs) How the cookie, the delicious cookies. Oh yes. Yes, definitely. I'm hungry now. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, I've got a, I've got a couple of questions or two questions here. I'll go into quickly before we move on to other projects that you're doing and before we start wrapping up. Um, sure, sure. Simon Barry Brisbois. He is a French Canadian who listens to my show all the time. So thank you, Simon. Oh, awesome. Sorry, Simon, not Simon. Sorry, Simon. <laughs> um, Simon, bonjour. Yeah. <laughs> He'd like to know. He said recently the games of Zelda have been attacked by some feminists. I, 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 uh, for example, Anita Sarkeesian for being sexist in the damsel in distress storyline, which he completely disagrees with because Princess Zelda can pretty much fight for herself in both Super, mm. S- Super Smash Bros. Bros and in other games like Sheik, etc., and constantly fighting Ganon for centuries, politically, mm. etc. What, uh, what are your opinions on the matter? Do you agree with her or not? Hmm. <laughs> I can see both sides. 
and of course, um, she would, of course that would be her opinion on it. Yeah. Um, Anita's opinion, um, because she does have a very strong voice on the side of a certain kind of like, um, that spectrum of feminism. Mm-hmm. Uh, but <sighs> I can see it both ways. I understand that it is a traditional trope and that there could be something, it's almost like it sits within the genre that it is and it probably won't be reinvented. That's going to remain the, the storyline that Nintendo keeps for that, for that yeah. sort of thing. With other games, I mean, yeah, you have like Hyrule Warriors and like, well, I guess other games where you don't have to, like, it's, it's be, it'd be really hard to reinvent that, that thing. Yeah. I, I'm really glad that they fleshed out the character. I do think that she's one of the stronger versions of Zelda that I've ever seen for mm-hmm. sure. She's way more nuanced. She's got a full personality. And on top of that, her and Link are not romantic. So there's, there's that as well. There's not like being saved by the prince. And then ultimately they, they go off, they get married and she has a baby and you never hear from her again or something yeah. like that. You know, it's, yeah. it's never that. Um, it's an adventure story for the both of them. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I can see both. I can see both. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I am obviously, a, I am a feminist, of course. And for me, playing female warriors in general and empowering them as much as possible is very important for me. So I have thought of it too, but I'm certainly not going to knock the adjustments that have been made and and the story in general. And it's not like, I don't know, it's not like it's the only one doing that trope. Um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll be curious to see what they do in the future. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I do think that's something you just mentioned as well, is something that's happened a lot more in video games recently, which we've seen, which is a lot better than um, than it has been in the past, and that is seeing right. the more stronger female characters coming through. I mean, taking Assassin's Creed as purely example, you've got yourself, uh, you've got Evie Fry, you've got uh, Melisanthe, please, well, I'm yeah. hoping that I'm pronounce her name right I'm so sorry you know in, in Odyssey and so really strong fit. I mean you've got Tomb Raider you've got Lara Croft you know obviously that's been reinvented so much and gone are the crop tops and the you know the hot pants and it's, and now she's just a badass in like in torn jeans and a shirt and kicking everyone yeah. but so those there's a lot more of that coming through just like it is in film it seems to have echoed across the entertainment industry and it's such a good thing to see such empower yeah. and characters like yourself actresses like yourself empowering Young girls, you, I say, we go to comic cons and you see all these young girls now, and they're looking the most badass people you've seen because they're dressing like the characters <laughs> on screen, and you know they're, they're just it's it's really good to see mm-hmm. in a really basic way yeah. of putting it. <laughs> but it is, but it is, and obviously those things are changing. They're changing steadily, and there's obviously like I don't know. Victoria and I have talked about this quite a bit as well. Just um, there's just there's a lot more to be done, but it is changing. But there's a lot more to be done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's. So let's keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. There's definitely a lot more which can be done. Um, same with African Americans. We've seen Black Panther. So, there's, but it's a good mm. start. I'll say it's a great start and a great way to start things. But there's still a lot more way to go. <laughs> yeah, um, a lot of exciting things happening. Yeah, keep it going. Yeah, for sure. Moment, the momentum has started, so keep it going. Cool. <laughs> the, the other question Simon has is then on, on of the movie Mother by Darren oh, yeah. Aronofsky. Are you a fan mm-hmm. of the director himself? <laughs> <laughs> I was, that's kind of it. Well, said, are you a fan of the director? What was your reaction to the final film and some of, some of the strong reactions during its reception, like at the Venice Film Festival? Oh, well, listen, I mean, first of all, he's, he, his filmmaking is made to cause reactions. Mm-hmm. There's just, of course, it's going to be a divisive thing. And he gets his funding from people who are giving him an artistic chance to actually do that. So, yeah. Uh, for me to work with, um, you know, some art house director like that in general is they are like pivotal moments in my career. Always, always. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed it. He is he has a very strong personality. Um, working with him was it was a special film to work on. And I mean that in like the best of ways. But I also was like sitting there for a week with Ed Harris and Javier Bardem and Michelle Pfeiffer and just I was like. So that I could be in worse company. Let me yeah. <laughs> True. It was like a masterclass. Like just being yeah. on his film was like a masterclass. And I got to play baseball with Ed Harris in the parking lot. And I'm like, I can die now. So um, that's, wow. those were the behind the scenes moments that I had making it. When I saw the film, I was, I left and I, I thought that being in the film would make me have no real emotional reaction to the film. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I remember like my partner and I at the time, like we walked down the street and we were like, I got to get out of this crowd. We just got to get out of here. We just got to got to go. And weirdly, this weird thing happened when we were walking down the street after the film. There were these people going by. We ended up walking through something that looked like a 
it was really close to McGill University in, in mm-hmm. Montreal. And there were a lot of like drunk students and people who were like crowding around. I don't know if you've seen the film, but it's no. like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hordes of people. Anyway, it, it gets, I won't give it away for anybody, <laughs> but let's just say that you don't want to be in a crowd of people who are chaotic after watching that film because it right. is like, it suddenly feels like you're back in the film mm-hmm. because the film, like you, the way that the, the way that it's shot is, is very wild with the camera, uh, camera angles and like cutlass, cutlessness of it. Anyway. Yeah. Some, some girls walked by and she, she goes to the other one. She's like, Oh my God. And like, I actually saw a dead body and we were like, taxi, taxi. <laughs> like, let's get, we're like, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> and we got out of that neighborhood really fast. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was crazy. Yeah. So I'll just say it had a profound effect on me. Actually. I was surprised yeah. even though I was in it and I knew what was happening. So. <laughs> Excellent. <Yeah. Fair> enough. <laughs> Can imagine how scary that could be. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's, and, <laughs> and like you say, so yeah, especially him. The, there are some out there like him um, who are. That's what their aim is. That's the whole point of their films is, sure. is to create that division Absolutely. and create. And again, that's great because you 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 get in the emotions of people. You know, you're drawing emotions, whether it's from one one way of looking at it or from the other side. You you know, you're drawing people's emotions. So that means that they're engaged in the film, which means they're watching, which means you know, <laughs> it's. It's spurring more, spurring them on to believe in, in imaginations, and yeah. And my words yeah. are really awful tonight. <laughs> I'm, no, so no. Sorry. I'm just, I, you're just making me think. I'm like, and and he is so successful at creating a certain kind of surreal, um, tense environment um, mm-hmm. in all of his films, and they they're they're really suspenseful and they're really artful. Um, and he just like he's he's just dogged about his vision, and that's it's refreshing to have somebody who's like that specific about what they want. Yeah. Um, so much of TV and film is not made that way these days. So mm-hmm. to be able to work with somebody like that is like always an honor and a privilege. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. Excellent. Um, before I get onto my final question, um, which you'd be glad about, I'm sure <laughs> you'd be like, finally. <laughs> oh my God. It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I can be able to go out of the town in Madison now. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's exhausted me so much. Yeah. I'm glad you out. <laughs> is, um, I mean, obviously, there's certain things with with upcoming projects that you've got. What kind of is there, is there anything you can talk about that you've got coming out, which which we might be able to see? I know this is a very difficult question when I come to this one because I I can kind of you've got non disclosures, you've got stuff that you can't. <laughs> so yeah, and this stuff. Might be- uh, let's see. Um, I recently had an episode. Um, I think it was episode five or six. I can't remember which one on the detectives, which is a series that mm-hmm. she's in Canada that came out, and. I'm going to be on another TV series that will be coming out in 2019. That's a reboot of an old one, like an old classic TV series. Yeah. So that should be fun. Just a, a one episode with potential of more. Um, but I can't, yeah, I can't really say what it is. I'm sorry. That's so, that's so lame. <laughs> yeah, that's I got fun. some really fun video game stuff that yeah. hopefully will release next year and the year after. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm recording an album and it's three days of studio work away from being totally recorded. And we're going to wow. be releasing that in probably late spring of next year so fantastic. those are those are my big things coming out though excellent that's fantastic yeah. so we're gonna yeah, <laughs> you're really busy which is great so we're gonna see lots of you we'll, that sounds right. i was gonna say we'll be playing lots of that sounds so wrong but we'll be playing lots of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all players <laughs> yeah, yeah you, know what, can't handle this, <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> and listening, and also listening to music, so all, all, of, all the avenues of entertainment that you could think of Literally, <laughs> we'll be getting. And again, that sounds really dodgy. <laughs> no. That's only you. That's your mind. Though. It is. Yeah, I was going to say it is when it's my mind. Sorry. <laughs> cool. Right. My final question for you. It's um, this is. Last year, I had a gentleman on the show, Mike Quinn. He's been. He was nine gnome in Star Wars, and he's been. A, he's worked with Jim Henson as a puppeteer and a muppeteer for oh. thirty years. Amazing. And. Uh, Someone sent the question in, and I thought, you know what? That's such a cool question. I will ask every guest I can. Um, obviously, some guests I can judge who might not want to answer it, <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll spare them it. But yourself, you, I think uh, I might get a fun answer from you. <laughs> so, if you could have a Muppet created after you, oh what, what, mm-hmm. what character would it be, and why? And it could be an existing one, or a mix of one, or a brand Ooh. new total. Mm. I really love the Muppets and I grew up in them. We, like Muppet Baby's Christmas Carol. We know the whole thing by heart. All my sisters yeah. and I, we would we sing it every year. 
Oh gosh, I'm such a big Jim Henson fan. Lab- Labyrinth is my. Somebody asked me yesterday, "What is your favorite movie of all time?" And I was like, <laughs> "Labyrinth, probably." So, yeah, yeah. Um, Mike yeah, actually worked some of the trolls. Of yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike was one of the puppeteers of the trolls in Labyrinth. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I would. I would probably <laughs> have a big geek out session if I met him. Yeah, he's, he's great. Yeah, he's, the little trolls in the bad bedroom and stuff. He was property. Ah, oh, <laughs> all hiding. Probably a combination of like Ralph. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make like. Can't say Ralph and Miss Piggy, but. Um... <laughs> It might have to be a new, might have to be a new one. Uh, my sister and I do a lot of um, Harley and Marley at oh, Christmas time. Mm-hmm. Um, it would probably be like an old lady version of Harley and Marley, and I'd have one for my sister as well. Yeah, that's what it. That's what it would be. <laughs> like old, old elderly puppets who were like just gregarious and completely awesome, like Harley and Marley, and uh, yeah, that's what would. Cool. And they'd be like watching performances, and they'd probably be food critics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the female version of them as food critics. Cool. Those so are female Statler and Waldorf. That be. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah, thank no, you. I was just thinking that song. I know you know. Marley and Marley. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Statler and Waldorf. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. No, that's quite cool. Not many people. I'm quite liking Statler this idea now. Yeah. Sit <laughs> down. <laughs> Yeah, they're terrible. Yeah, it's, no, I love those. I grew up on the Muppets as well, and they're just amazing. Like you say, Muppets Christmas Carol. It's on my deep. It's on my um, recorded system there. It's like I'm doing it. It's a, it's a, it's a must have to watch. <laughs> it's Christmas time. Muppets Christmas Carol comes out. It's one of the best Christmas movies and treasure of all time. They're, they're, they're just amazing mm-hmm. films. It's like yeah. I even I'm gonna do this for you. I'm sorry, Patricia. Your ears are gonna have oral horrend. It's gonna be like throwing up in your ears for now. My impression. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, this answer. It's um <clears throat> why. Are there so many songs about rainbows? It's my little Kermit. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's such a great Kermit. So yeah, uh, oh, I've been practicing. Yeah, <laughs> you're great to speak. You're such a good impression of yourself. <laughs> or like, well, why thank you, Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, there you go. So that was it. Yeah. So is there anything before I stop recording that you'd like to say to the people who are watching and listening to this? Oh man, um, tune into the Game Awards. It's going to be really fun. And if you don't, um, thank you for watching this podcast. Thank you for watching Chris's podcast. He's a stand up man. And uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And I say hello to everybody. And if you want to follow us on social media, I guess you know where yours are. Mine are um, Twitter and Instagram are my mains. And they're Somerset to underscore Summer like the season, not, not with an O, not like, not, not like the British spelling. <laughs> Um, looking forward to a big next year and hope you all have a great one too. That's about it. Thank you. (laughs)